Greetings. I am Herbert Erpaderp, and it's time for Ask a Herbert Erpaderp, which is me, I'm Ask a Herbert Erpaderp, usually without the Ask a bit. It's about a week later than it usually is, but I've been sick, so deal with it, I guess. And because of that, I would like to try and make my life a little bit easier, so this month, we're going to have a text-to-speech thing asking the questions. Won't that be fun? As I'm writing out the answers here, I haven't actually generated the speech, but I do expect at least some amusing mispronunciations. Anyway, let's get some questions answered. Petarenko said, Hello Herbert, recently I was on a local train show, and one train has caught my attention. It's basically my favourite train, and I wonder what you think about it. This is class 477.0 Papagai, or an English parrot, and it's the last steam train made for the Czechoslovak railway. Not much more I can say about it, but it's made by the same company that makes Skoda cars. I like it. I especially like the blue colour. Colourful steam locomotives are cool. They were often painted bright or brightish colours here too. I think the fact that it's a huge tank engine is also pretty interesting. I might be wrong, but that does seem pretty uncommon. It's an interesting looking engine. Hetz's Gunner Hetz said, Have you thought about using Pantone 448C paint on your models and miniatures? The ugliest colour in the world. I thought that's what it was, but I did have to Google to be sure. It's the colour they use on cigarette packets here. And it does kind of look like a colour that you would paint a tank. I don't know how to buy paint specifically using the Pantone system, and existing paint manufacturers probably use it, but you do have to pay to use that system, so I don't know how you would go about getting a specific batch of Pantone 448C paint. Though I guess that's not really the question. I haven't actually thought about painting a model that colour before, but now I kind of want to paint a smoke pack tank, complete with the gross pictures on it. That sounds really hard though, and YouTube probably wouldn't appreciate it. Trekin Belovic said, What's about a modelling stream where you build all of your unbuild crew figures? I am ready for you streaming 24 hours. I think I would rather leave the crew figures unbuilt. It would take so long, probably more than 24 hours. I think I'll just leave those figures to organise amongst themselves and do whatever terrible things they're planning on doing. Good luck to them though, it'll be challenging while they're all in multiple pieces. Herchian said, How do you store all your unpainted but built models? I've got three shelves above my workspace. The top one mostly has unbuilt 35th scale kits on it, in their boxes. The other two are quite messily covered in various built models that I intend to paint sometime. I do need to rearrange that to make it a bit neater, and to hopefully avoid avalanche. I've also got other built models in various places like on top of my PC case, near the fish tank and bookshelves and things like that. Pretty much wherever. Even though they're not painted, they're still nice to look at. The rest are in boxes, or in the case of gaming models, a lot of them are in army bags with foam trays I've got. Eventually though, I am going to need better storage. It's something for future Herbert to worry about though. Sucks to be future Herbert. Hey, wait. Major General Bunk said, Midwinter Minis have recently uploaded a video discussing ethical problems in historical wargaming. The video is full of misconceptions and myths especially since they only talk about World War II when referring to historical essentially extra credits infamous Stop Normalizing Nazis video, but for tabletop. This normally wouldn't be a problem worthy of mention in AAHE, except for the fact that Midwinter are a very influential channel for tabletop wargaming, affecting our hobby negatively and have probably convinced many that those who play German World War II units on the tabletop are secretly Nazis themselves. As a channel with small reach yourself, can you give your opinion on the contentious issue of representing Nazis and other historical evils on the tabletop and dispel the misconceptions Midwinter spread with their video, even if unintentionally? It does seem I'm a bit late to saying something about this. I did see people talking about it though. Obviously, I think Nazis should be punched in the face anytime you see one, and that you can't be friends with a Nazi because then you're accepting their backwards ideology. That's a whole discussion in itself though. To clarify, I didn't rewatch the video before writing this out, so I might be missing something, but I feel like the video is kind of silly. I definitely understand somebody not wanting to play Nazis, that's absolutely fine. You don't have to play them, and if you don't want to, don't. It does seem like they're maybe suggesting you have to identify with the army you're playing in bolt action, and that German players being Nazis is a big problem, in all caps. And that is the problem with the video, I think, saying that it's the big problem. Yes, it is a problem, Nazis being anywhere is a problem, but I wouldn't say it's a huge issue in historical wargaming itself. 
it is an issue that 40k also has. Maybe you don't actually play Nazis in 40k, but there are certainly things in 40k that are somewhat based on Nazis. But you wouldn't say that's the huge problem with 40k, would you? I think the thing to remember is that if you're not a complete moron, you can in fact learn about Nazis and other ideologies without just blindly accepting them and adopting them for yourself. You can collect a German army because it looks cool, and you can play a tabletop or video game as a Nazi or any bad guy and not actually be one. Nobody flips out when a famous actor plays a Nazi in a movie and claims that they're actually a Nazi for it. Nobody who isn't batshit insane anyway. I would wager that very few people who play Germans in bolt action do it because they support Nazis. There are definitely people who are into Nazism and fascism and all other sorts of things, and some of those people do play war games. I'm all for excluding those, and I've encountered a couple myself. It seems like this sort of person is becoming a bit more bold lately, so it is important to remind them that they're not welcome. That said, I don't think it's really all that common. I also feel like a lot of people have overreacted to that video. I saw some really angry and defensive comments on Reddit, though it is Reddit. The video doesn't outright accuse everybody who wants to play Germans of being Nazis, and maybe they didn't do a great job with it. It seems like maybe they were trying to ask questions and foster discussion, and possibly be a little bit controversial for views, maybe. The topic is definitely something to think about, but to suggest you have to identify with and endorse an army you play in bolt action is quite silly. Not good silly either. They didn't really mention that similar things exist in 40k as well. Like I said, you don't directly play as Nazis, and sure the armies aren't real armies, but you can definitely see some historically inspired design elements, I guess you might say. I don't personally think there's anything wrong with that, but the same question could be asked about those. If you play those armies that are pretty heavily based on Nazis, are you a Nazi too? No, of course not, that's stupid. Are there people who are into Nazism and things like that who play 40k? Absolutely, same as with Bolt Action. Are they welcome? Not here. The Master Cutler said, I have a time machine bucket list. It's a list of things I'd see, and people I'd meet, if I had a time machine. The rules are, you're safe from any danger, and you can communicate with people regardless of language barrier. What would be on your time machine bucket list? Being safe from danger really opens so many options. Possibly too many options. There's so much that's happened in history that would be interesting to see in person, and I've never really had a bucket list for that kind of thing because, well, it's not really possible, is it? Though, now that it is, in the context of this question, I'm really indecisive. It's the kind of thing where you would make a list and then ten minutes later remember something else that you would want to add. I'd obviously be interested in witnessing various battles of World War II if I couldn't be harmed, like the first use of various tanks or whatever. Up nice and close. That'd be cool. I'd also like to witness things like the first trains running and being able to see the moon landings. I assume if I can't be harmed I can hang out on the moon just fine. My question is, is the time machine capable of moving forwards in time? I'd like to know if humans get any better, and if we explore space and such. And if not, how did we destroy ourselves? Hetz is gonna Hetz said, what are your thoughts on Battletech? I don't really have a lot of thoughts on Battletech. I mean, I like big stompy robots, who doesn't? I don't have any of the models though, and I've never really considered playing the game. I do like seeing them though. Spanish Boy said, if you could see any historical figure, popular or not in any time, and tell them something about 2023, who would you see, and what would you do? This is like the time machine one. Really tricky to think of one good answer. I guess if you went really far back in time and told somebody the realities of 2023, like smartphones and other technology, they'd at best not believe you, or burn you at the stake. It would be kind of cool to, say, tell the Wright brothers how far planes have come, something like that. It would, of course, be better if we could show them something from 2023, though. Then they might believe us. Or burn us at the stake for witchcraft. Trekin Belovich said, If you had a butler, what would be his name? Perhaps Archibald MacBeautish. Archibald is a good name for a butler. My first thought was something from those videos James Stephanie Sterling did, where there was an unseen, I assume, butler called Royston. Royston! Royston! Said something like that. That would be a great name for a butler, mostly because it's just fun to say. Royston, fetch me my modelling knife. Mm -hmm. Spanish boy said, 
Have you ever confronted the carpet monster? I would, but I've never seen the carpet monster. How can one confront an enemy that can't be seen? The best I can do is say mean things and hope that it can hear me. Trekin Belovich said, would you build a Canyonero model kit? Unexplained fires are a matter for the courts. If there was a Canyonero kit from The Simpsons, I would definitely buy and build that. In my head I've been thinking of those stupid huge American SUVs as Canyoneros for a while, so that's kind of what popped into my head. I don't think I would go out of my way to build one of those though. Hetz's Gunner Hetz said, have you found any kits by Mark 1 models in your local hobby store yet? I've been avoiding my local hobby shops lately because my car registration is due soon, and the best way to not spend money is to avoid the temptation. They can't take my money if I'm not there. That said, I don't know that I've actually even heard of Mark 1 models before, or at least I don't recall ever seeing them before. Out of curiosity and at risk of poking the bear of temptation, I checked out some of the online stores I buy from, and they do have some Mark 1 kits in stock. Metro Hobbies had quite a few, including a blimp. It seems like they only do aircraft kits, which could explain why I'm not familiar with them. Hetz's Gunner Hetz said, which colour plastic do you prefer and why, Airfix Light Grey or Games Workshop Dark Grey? They both have their benefits. I like the darker grey better for looking at, and it does work a bit better on camera too. When priming a model, I would prefer the light grey, because it's easier to see where you've missed any spots. It is a bit more annoying to video though. In the YouTube comment section of last month's Ask a Herbert Herbert Herb, Nizel Mohammed said, did you ever build a full interior tank? I have built a couple of full interior tanks before, the Rubicon King Tiger and a Hobby Boss, I think, T3485. There might be more, but I forget because I'm old and remembering is hard. SOS Legio Primus said, did OU ever consider making windows for wargaming models for kits from Clear Acetate? I don't usually bother with windows, and to be fair most of the kits I build don't have them. But I have occasionally thought about using clear acetate or similar, and sometimes the instructions even suggest it. I've never really given it serious thought though. For wargaming models it just doesn't seem that important to me, but maybe one day I should give it a whirl. It could be fun and interesting. Okay, that's all the questions this month, let's have a look at some of the models that have been shared over on the Discord server. Trekan Belovich shared this Soviet Sherman with 76mm gun. This is a 15mm scale plastic kit from Battlefront, and it's been painted to represent a tank of the 3rd Brigade of the 23rd Tank Corps in 1945 during the Battle for Vienna. Trekan notes that this unit didn't have Shermans, and this isn't the kind with the diesel engine that the Soviets had, so I'm pretty sure the historical accuracy police are on their way. Good luck Trekan. I hope they don't put you in historical accuracy jail. Sneaky Zaku shared this tank that's been looted by orcs, saying, with the latest in digital camo, no one will ever see this looted tank coming, and that's true. I can barely see it now. I really like orc looted vehicles. The random chunks of armour and bolts and teeth and stuff all over them look really cool. It's a lot of fun to look at and build. Or I would assume I've not built one myself, but it really is cool. Eru shared this SDKFZ-251 aus Vorong D, which looks like it's been busy transporting Germans through the mud. Maybe so they don't get their boots all muddy. I do like that the mud isn't over the top, it's a convincing and tasteful amount. Even though I don't actually apply a lot of mud to models myself, I would imagine that it's really easy to go overboard with. But it looks cool, and that's the important bit. Okay, so that's it for the models this month. A bit shorter than usual, but that's just how it is this month. Thank you to everybody who shares their modelling work, and of course, the question asking folks. And a very big thank you to my patrons. Also, while I'm here, at the risk of burning my voice out, if you're looking for some tools, check out Nine Steps Industries. They're an Australian company who have sent me some tools to check out recently, and I've been using them on stream. I think they're pretty good. I especially like the tweezers with the matte coating. If you'd like to order something from them, use code HERBERT20 and you'll get 20% off. I'll put a link in the description. As always, if you've got a question that a Herbert Herbert Herb can answer, put it in the comments section below or over on Discord. Take care of yourselves, be excellent to each other, and thanks for watching. Farewell.